was the first date of the final semester that I attended the Vampire Academy, the only place that the trained oh. professional vampires. Hmm. I had been eagerly anticipating this day because... <gasps> Celine, you've done it to me! If you want to see how I'll deal with her, subscribe to Boa Fairy Tales. As for the confrontation between me and that girl, it's an ancient story. We both come from famous vampire clan. The rivalry between our clans made us compete in every little thing. <laughs> This time, Celine really succeeded. Our academy is divided into two species, Royal and Dapir. Celine and I are both Royals, pure blood vampires, or those with the ability to perform magic. We'll live in the imposing, luxurious tower, spending most of our time chatting or learning ways to become more aristocratic. On the contrary, Dapir vampires Hybrids with humans live differently. Their lifestyle is simpler, and they have to work harder. Although they don't possess magic, their speed and skills are extraordinary. They are trained to be protectors for royals. Royals and Dampiers live separately, only beginning to bond for life at the prom ceremony. To prepare for prom, starting today, Dampiers will be moved to the royal area to socialize. But that little Celine girl has taken everything away! <gasps> what have you done? Oops, I accidentally borrowed your prom date. You're not mad, are you? Oh, mm. it seems like you were a bit annoyed, huh? <laughs> Betty, I... Well, now what are you going to do, Betty? Everyone has a date, and if you don't participate in prom, how will you graduate? At that moment, for some unknown reason, I declared that I would go with the only person who didn't have a date to prom. I also had doubts about my audacious decision. The person I chose was Edward. Edward is a low-profile dampier, so inconspicuous that no one remembers him. He struggles with academics, has a reserved personality, and never participates in group activities. I don't agree. What? He dared? <laughs> all right, all right, no worries. <laughs> Eric and I will definitely become the king and queen of prom to get that moonstone for you. It helps with mind control, you know. And who knows, maybe Edward will accept your invitation. <laughs> for the first time in 17 years, I had to endure such embarrassment. I agree. What? What did you say? I said I agree. See you tomorrow. <gasps> hmm. Like a dream, from that day on, Edward and I truly began mm. to get to know each other to prepare for prom. It wasn't easy to change the mindset of someone <laughs> as stubborn as Edward. Oh. Do you really want to cooperate? With the current situation, even if we don't participate in prom, we can become the king and queen. You knew that, didn't you? Sorry, but you're probably regretting not having Eric mm. now, right? Why should she regret something that has lost its value? What's the freak saying now? How can a weirdo compare to someone who always wants to steal other people's things? Thanks to you, I'll have a hundred times better prom date than Eric! I may have spoken strongly, but seeing them happy together, I was truly sad. Look, weren't you very determined just now? Come on, we'll win. You said I'm a hundred times better than him, hmm. didn't you? Oh, give this back to you. Study it carefully, bookworm. <gasps> you? How dare you read? You! Don't tell anyone. If hmm. this gets out... If this gets out, I'll be seen as a weirdo just like Edward. Oh well, studying about Shitty Goy is my special hobby. These are the most feared and rarely mentioned type of vampires in vampire history. Because they are the only ones who feed not only on humans, but also on royals and dampiers. They are resurrected from the dead and become immortal, rumored to be the harbingers of destruction. 
In terms of power, neither royals nor dampiers are a match for them. The Vampire Academy was founded to train vampires to fight against this species. What if Edward reveals this information? I can't even imagine. But Edward didn't do that. Mm -hmm. He even showed interest in the notebook. Mm. Why are you studying these? I want to know more about Stratagoy. Are they really as evil as they say? And instead of destroying them, is there a way to redeem them? Mm. Edward also <laughs> started cooperating with me more in our prom mm. preparations. Mm. Mm. We had a fairly, um, enjoyable time. And I realized that I might have started to like him a little. After that night, Edward underwent a dramatic change. Oh. When he discarded his disastrous fashion, he became an entirely different person. Even Celine couldn't help but be impressed. How could Eric compare to this eccentric guy? Not only handsome, but the scent of Edward's blood also had an irresistible charm that captivated the royals. Feeling that she had lost a delicious meal, Celine was once again eager to steal my prom date right before the party. According to tradition, royal and dampier students are divided into groups to guard the school and practice their teamwork. Unfortunately, due to bad luck, Edward and I were assigned to the same group as those two troublemakers. Thanks to them, the atmosphere between us became more awkward. This task was supposed to be a training exercise with harmless traps set up, but unexpectedly the snakes, the vampire's eternal enemies, appeared here. With our current abilities, we were no match for them. Ha! My dear friend and the guy I once liked disappeared in the blink of an eye. I'll hold them off. You run away. How could I accept that? We were a team, and of course, I had my own abilities. A bite barely grazed me and left me stunned. After that night, my body seems to start changing. Perhaps it was the side effect of the snake's venom, even though it was extracted in time. I thought that after the disaster, Edward and I would become closer, but no! He changed again, becoming as cold as he was in the beginning. Just to let you know, Edward is my new prom day. What? Edward, what's going on? Exactly what you heard. That moment became even more unsettling <laughs> when Eric lost a lot to Celine. No! <gasps> there must be some hidden mystery in this. Through investigation, <gasps> I discovered a horrifying truth. Edward, <gasps> the one who once captivated me, is a special street boy. <gasps> <gasps> what? What do we intend to do? This is the Vampire Academy. The professors will punish Trigoy. Come on, they'd have to punish you as well then, Betty. Don't you remember anything? <gasps> According to his account, on a mission night, he bit me and turned me into a Strigoi. You? How dare you? Be smart and stay quiet until my plan succeeds. When you return there, it will be you who faces danger. What do you plan to do? Give him what he deserves. A man who abandoned his wife and children like he did doesn't deserve the position of headmaster. <gasps> Edward seemed to be looking down on me too much. <gasps> Even if I got punished, I had to warn ah. everyone about his plan. When I arrived at prom, he and Celine had become the king and queen and received the Moonstone Ring. <laughs> Something's not right. He used the ring to control everyone's <gasps> minds. This would make the Academy's defense line disappear, leading to the appearance of more street boys. I don't care about what you're planning, just don't get in our way. What if I am the girl you truly care about? <gasps> However, hmm. perhaps hmm. even Edward didn't anticipate that Alan would change direction and rush towards me. 
The little remaining strength within me had already been used to break down the door to get here. <laughs> I guess I was right. She's the only one you care about, isn't she? It turns out that Edward knew that Alan might target the girl next to him. So he intentionally let Celine become a decoy, replacing me at prom. <gasps> Why did you save me? I've turned into a strigoi too, you know. Huh? Do you believe everything I say? You're stubborn right up to prom. Truly stubborn. Right after that, I was also controlled by him to continue the unfinished <laughs> plan. <gasps> you recognize me now, don't you? Unexpected that the son turned into a strigoi can come back here for revenge, right? <gasps> it's my mother. My mother sacrificed herself to save me, but it didn't work. And she ended up like this, even in her passing. She still wanted me to return this to you. When the two rings were placed side by side, a strange and magical phenomenon occurred. Perhaps the magic of family bond. Back then, during the intense battle with the Strigoi, the headmaster bravely stormed through the front lines. However, he inadvertently lost track of his wife and son. They were threatened, and their safety was exchanged for the headmaster's appearance, but due to lost information, by the time they reached the headmaster, his loved ones were no more. <laughs> the two rings were originally a pair, a testament to the love between Edward's parents. The memory segment ended simultaneously with the control of the rings over the vampire, inadvertently leading to a tragedy. It was the only way to end the immortal life of the Strigoi. Hey, you can't sleep. You haven't even apologized to me for what Celine did. Headmaster, please save him quickly. He's your own son. Calm down. You're too noisy. Father, I'm sorry. Didn't expect to meet you like this. The Headmaster <laughs> hastily used all his strength to exchange for Edward's life. Please, Father, don't do that. I can't lose my only loved one again. It turns out there was a way to save Strigoi, but it required him to give up immortality and at the same time for a royal to sacrifice their power and even their life to save him. <laughs> Edward was no longer a Strigoi, but it was a shame that his father, in addition to losing his power, was permanently disabled. Today, they will return to the castle deep in the forest to spend more time together. Now that I've truly become a Damphir, hmm. I will still work hard to practice and one day be able to protect and bond huh? with you. As for you... I'm willing to wait. <gasps> Look how impatient he is. Hmm. Well, this time I admit defeat hmm. to you. <laughs> This story is a thank you message for Beth D. Lyco Girl 1789, who has contributed many ideas to WoA Fairy Tales. In the future, we hope to receive more contributions from the audience to further develop WoA Fairy Tales. Don't forget to subscribe to WoA Fairy Tales to help us reach 1 million subscribers soon. And now, please share your emotions with WoA Fairy Tales after watching today's story. See you in the upcoming episode! In the realm of precious gemstones, the diamond lineage stood as the mightiest. They were magnificent <laughs> gemstones, radiating a luminous beauty and possessing an unparalleled durability. Alas, a volcanic cataclysm a century passed. King Yellow Diamond and Queen Red Diamond gave their all to forge an unyielding diamond barrier. With their departure, they left behind two unfortunate daughters, Sparkle and Pink Diamond. Sparkle, the youngest, had reached maturity, yet she remained a raw diamond, bearing a prominent crack from the calamity long ago. This flaw afflicted her with profound self-consciousness and a sense of estrangement. 
In contrast to Sparkle, her elder sister Pink Diamond epitomized both beauty and authority in the kingdom. She ascended the throne, succeeding her parents, and ruled over the gem realms for ages. Pink Diamond was demanding on Sparkle, believing the crack restrained her potential. Sparkle hastened to the fiery forge for training, transform into a diamond to erase that blemish, the lineage's bane. Sister, you're truly overbearing. Despite relentless effort, success eluded her no matter how hard she tried. The tale began one day when Sparkle stumbled upon an ancient tome. Could a very volcano sealed by our parents possess true magic? A magic that could mend a scar on my face! With hmm. excitement, Sparkle shared her discovery with Pink <gasps> Diamond. No, that place is treacherous. Many have perished due to the creature residing there. But Sparkle's desire to prove herself and forge her own path propelled her forward. So that very night, she journeyed to the volcano's peak, accompanied by Emerald and Sapphire. They too were gemstones marked by imperfections, which had led to their isolation. They found a way to manipulate the diamond soldiers. But if we don't, we'll forever be the ones looked down upon. But if we don't, we'll forever be the ones looked down upon. Fear not, Sparkle. The volcano has slumbered undisturbed for ages. There's no reason for it to erupt now. Indeed, all we need to do is go there, mend our bodies' cracks, then return to restore the original diamond barrier. Having deliberated, Emerald, mm. Sapphire and Sparkle pooled their strengths, drawing energy from the moonlight to conjure a resounding explosion. Huh? Oh. Huh? Hmm. What is this? It must be the doing of those nefarious trio! <gasps> Calm down, everyone! Hmm. Alone, she couldn't mend this barrier, for it had been built by her parents. And it required a great deal of magic to rebuild. <sighs> Soldiers, protect the barrier. I will seek out the other three. Hmm. Oh? Emerald, Sapphire, and Sparkle journeyed through the night to reach the fiery mountain. <gasps> hmm? Oh? Huh? Emerald? Sapphire? Help me secure the rope! I will plunge into the fiery mountain! Huh? Hmm. <laughs> Here, she beheld a slumbering beast, pressed beneath colossal boulders. Sparkle kept swaying gracefully on the delicate thread. It made Emerald and Sapphire struggle tirelessly to keep her suspended high above. Regrettably, Sparkle brushed against jagged rocks, inadvertently releasing the monster and awakening it from slumber. The lava also awaited its moment to erupt. Emerald and Sapphire were pulled down by the thread along with Sparkle. All three bore visible scars and wounds. The temperature continued to rise, and if they stayed too long, they would melt away. The monster lunged to attack. The pink diamond appeared and conjured a giant shield. Why didn't you listen to me and ventured into danger on your own? Did you know that both our parents sacrificed themselves to build the barrier against lava? Ah! Huh? Have you ever been rejected or pushed away, sister, so that you could understand how I feel? You've always made me feel unworthy of being a member of the Diamond family, always self-conscious about my flaws. Once I repair this imperfection, I'll have the potential to cultivate into a diamond. I want you to be proud of me. Is that wrong? <laughs> the monstrous creature swung its shield, charging forward and prepared to breathe fire at Pink Diamond. <gasps> Sparkle! However, the monster was unharmed and suddenly soared high into the sky, leaving the volcanic mountain and heading toward the village. 
lava had already risen quite high. This volcano could erupt at any moment. Behind them, waves of lava were rushing into the kingdom fiercely. Emerald and sapphire, along with other gemstones, temporarily built a wall to cover the hole. Meanwhile, Pink Diamond tried to contain the monster's rampage. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pink Diamond tried to contain the monster's rampage. The stone mask on the creature's head fell off, revealing a crack. Release the innocent ones! Release them. It's all your fault that I became like this. A hundred years ago, that creature was Quartz, a rainbow quartz living in the Gemstone Kingdom. However, an accident left him with a scar on his face. The people of that time drove him away, including the King and Queen. They all believed he would bring shame to this kingdom. Quartz went to the volcanic mountain to repair the scar on his face. But his actions unintentionally led to the volcano's eruption. And he became trapped under massive boulders. Rainbow Quartz remained there for months, and his resentment grew, slowly transforming him into a monster. Quartz merged with the volcanic mountain and gained control over it. Quartz believed that the gemstone people only cared about appearances. So, he raised the lava higher, wanting to wipe them all out. Pink Diamond realized the truth, and she looked at him and her entire people with sorrow. Just then, Sparkle soared in like a divine being. But, she had transformed into a new entity, a rainbow diamond unlike any before. Sparkle, you're still alive! When I fell into the lava, I endured a lot of pain and extreme heat. But it was the scar on my face that absorbed all the lava's power and unlocked the powerful rainbow diamond form. Never hide your imperfections, for they do not make us weaker, but stronger. The gemstone people looked at each other in confusion. They reluctantly apologized to Sparkle and also removed the adhesive bandages on themselves revealing that they too had numerous scratches just like him. After that accident, not a single gemstone citizen in the kingdom was without flaws. But they all chose to hide their scars with adhesive bandages, fearing they would be looked down upon. But thanks to Sparkle, they realized their mistake and rushed to embrace the creature, spreading love to him. <laughs> We're sorry! Touched by everyone's love, the monster's body cracked open. The man abandoned his monstrous form to return to his original Rainbow Quartz self. I'm sorry. I used to endure harsh expectations from my parents, which is why I placed a heavy burden on you. Both sisters <laughs> understood each other's hearts. From then on, the Gemstone Kingdom no longer discriminated against external flaws. They welcomed Rainbow Quartz back into the kingdom. <laughs> Sparkle and Pink Diamond became queens and created an egalitarian society. Everyone lived happily together. The story ends here today. Let's hit the subscribe button for Woa Fairy Tale to discover more wonderful and heartwarming stories. Look, the girl is hugging the person in black and rushing into the magic circle. Why is she doing that? If you want to know what happened, then follow Woa Fairy Tales right away. Once upon a time in a beautiful town, there lived a happily married couple mm. who had a lovely <laughs> daughter together. Our little daughter is as beautiful as the round moon. Let's name her Luna. <laughs> little Luna lived in the love and care of her parents until she was 10 years old. One day, when it was gloomy and pouring rain, her father put on a black coat and came to Luna to give her a necklace with strange and intricate engravings. Then, he walked out the door and left. Dad! Dad! My dear daughter, 
I will be back with you soon. While I'm away, please take care of your mother in my place. Despite Luna's mother crying and trying to stop him, Luna's father just turned back to look at his wife and daughter, smiled, and then disappeared behind the curtain of rain. Due to missing and longing for her husband, Luna's mother got really sick and hard to cure. Luna also fell into depression and melancholy because of this. She spent her days moping around the house and not communicating with anyone. Their lives remained bleak like that for six years until Luna's 16th birthday. As the birthday candles were lit on the table, Luna's mother tried to sing a song for her daughter. But before she could do anything, huh? the candle suddenly huh? went out. Outside the window, there was a blurry shadow hovering back and forth, as if waiting to break open the window. At that moment, the necklace around Luna's neck glimmered, causing the shadow to startle and retreat, saving both of them from danger. This is no good, Luna. We have to move away from here right now. Although Luna didn't want to, she had to follow her mother. Before leaving, she turned back to take one last look at their old house as a farewell and also as the beginning of the exciting adventures that awaited her in her life. On the day Luna and her mother moved, a kind neighboring boy helped them carry their belongings. Thank you so much. Do you live nearby? Would you like to come in for some cookies? <laughs> My name is Jack. I live right next door. If you need any help, just let me know. Don't hesitate. I really like cookies. <laughs> Since Jack came into their lives, the atmosphere in the house became happier and brighter. Luna also opened up more, talked more, and the two of them quickly became best friends. Jack appeared like a ray of light that warmed Luna and her mother's hearts. Since moving into this house, Luna often had nightmares. Sometimes she woke up in the middle of the night and saw a shadow hovering back and forth outside her window. I'm really scared. I have had nightmares where a shadow is chasing me and when I reach the third floor, I wake up. Then there must be a mystery in this house. Do you want to explore the third floor with me? Sure. Let's go together. Luna and Jack were determined that day to sneak up to the third floor, where there was only one room. When they entered, they saw that the room was filled with old dusty objects. As they ventured deeper into the room, they discovered a hidden door tucked behind some chairs and wooden crates. They approached the door and opened it, revealing a staircase leading up to the attic. Walking into the room, the two were amazed because there were countless interesting things in the attic room. They were immersed in those objects until they heard a noise in the corner of the room and turned around and saw a little fairy. They screamed in terror and even the little fairy was scared and screamed. After all three of them calmed down, they cautiously approached each other. You must be little Luna, right? How do you know me? I am a fairy tasked with guarding this house. Your father spoke of you often, huh? as both he and your grandfather hmm? were talented huh? wizards. <laughs> I have a message to deliver to you two curious children. You must never venture into the nearby dark forest, for it is extremely dangerous. Huh? Two of them pretended to nod hmm? and listen to the fairy's hmm? warning, but that very night, out of curiosity, they sneaked out of the house and went to the nearby forest together. As soon as they were about to enter the forest, a barrier knocked them back. 
At that moment, a dark figure rushed towards them, intending to attack. Fortunately, the little fairy appeared in time to rescue them and chased away the dark figure. The little fairy breathed a sigh of relief and looked at them. So what's the secret of this forest? <sighs> this forest is the guardian of a magical gem with infinite power. Your father also sacrificed himself trying to protect this gem from the Devil King. Recently, I have sensed the return of the Devil King, and I am very worried. I wanted to enter the forest to get the gem first, but I couldn't get in. When Luna heard about her father, tears swelled up in her eyes. She tightly held onto her bracelet to prevent her tears from falling. Just huh? then, the bracelet lit up once again, and its huh? mysterious symbols appeared on the barrier. A door opened for them to enter the forest. The fairy initially wanted to go in alone, but Jack and Luna mm -hmm. insisted on following him. The three of them cautiously walked together in the dark forest. Suddenly, carnivorous flowers sprouted from the ground and attacked them. They dodged and weaved, but the flowers kept multiplying and attacking. Huh? Jack came up with the idea of picking up sharp thorns and use them to cut the carnivorous plants, allowing them to escape from the battlefield. Hmm. As they continued to move forward, they were blocked by a group of monstrous creatures with one eye, slimy bodies, and full of anger. The creatures attacked them relentlessly. But Luna noticed a weak spot in their bellies. The three of them charged towards the weak spot and defeated the creatures. The three of them continued on their journey and arrived at the cave where the gem was kept. As they entered, they saw a figure in black holding the gem. Thinking it was the Devil King, they charged towards the figure to attack. However, when the person turned around, Luna and the fairy were shocked to see that it was Luna's father. Luna burst into tears and ran towards her father, wanting to embrace him. However, at that moment, he was possessed by the devil and threw Luna away, charging towards the three of them to attack. Luna, I'll create a trap to contain the devil since he's still weak. You think of a way to lure him into it. Luna, I'll always be here by your side. Don't worry, we'll get through this together. Jack tried to distract the devil to make him less vigilant towards Luna. Taking advantage of the distraction, Luna rushed towards her possessed father and hugged him, leading him towards the seal created by the fairy. While hugging her father, Luna softly sang the lullaby that her father used to sing to her when she was little. As the lullaby ended, Luna's father suddenly regained consciousness. He let out a loud roar, breaking the seal and expelling the devil from his body. He looked towards Luna and held out his hand, holding both the magical gem and Luna's bracelet. They both emitted a bright light, creating a powerful force that destroyed the devil once and for all. After defeating the devil, the four of them walked out of the forest together. <laughs> Luna's mother was overjoyed to be reunited with her husband. <laughs> and from that day on, they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time in a magnificent and luxurious fairy tale kingdom, where gods, <laughs> demons, and humans coexisted, <clears throat> There was a beautiful and strong 18-year-old princess named Deja. 
Daisha possessed a magical sword that was passed down to her by her mentor, the Sun God, which had the power to expel the souls of demons from possessed individuals. Furthermore, she also had a magical eye since birth that could be used as a gateway to trap evil spirits inside, which made everyone admire her. In particular, her third eye had the power to see the imminent death of any living thing she touched. Despite her abilities, Daisha was absolutely forbidden from interfering with the cycle of life and death. If she disobeyed, she would be punished by the gods. Although Daisha was strong, she had a weakness. She often became tired and could not use her third eye when exposed to bright light like the sun. In fact, she could even see a dark soul inside her at times, which made her very worried. Hmm. She asked her mother about this, but the queen only became sad and evaded the question. I cannot explain everything to you right now, my child. But if you want to use your magic eye during the day, remember to wear your cloak. I have also locked all the rooms containing treasures, so if you need anything, just tell me. Hmm. Daisha didn't want to make things more difficult for the queen, hmm. so she kept these questions to herself. Hmm. One day, the magic from Daisha's eye was completely reversed. Instead of being able to use it to control demons, it unleashed many evil spirits. Daisha didn't understand what was happening, so after she managed to deal with the demons with her magical sword, she hurried to find the queen to talk about it. Upon arrival, Daisha was horrified to see the Sun God angry, capturing the Queen. Excuse me, Sun God, why did you take my mother's soul away? Hmm. That's because yesterday, you violated the prohibition when you used your third eye to save your mother. Therefore, I am here to punish your family. The Sun God recounted that yesterday, when Daisha bid farewell to the Queen to visit the Sun God Temple once a year, just like every year, her third eye suddenly lit up. It revealed to her that the Queen would pass away today due to old age and weakness. However, Daisha did not want to lose her only loved one, so she decided to change her mother's fate. Daisha quickly made an excuse to help her mother visit the Sun God Temple today, and then set out on her journey. After completing all the tasks at the temple, she happily returned home, but suddenly noticed a dark orb heading towards her. She quickly dodged and tried to catch the culprit, but he escaped. Nevertheless, Daisha was still happy that she had protected her mother from the wicked person today. However, the sun god witnessed Daisha's wrongful act, so we came here in person to punish both mother and daughter. Hmm. But all of this is my fault! My mother is completely innocent! Therefore, please forgive my mother and punish me in any way you want! Uh, since we are teacher and student, I will spare your mother's life if you promise never to repeat this mistake and agree to give me the Divine Sword. Because your impulsive and immature actions have disappointed me and I cannot easily forgive you. Therefore, I want to give the Divine Sword to someone who is more responsible than you in the future. For me, my mother's life is more important than anything else in the world, so I will give the Divine Sword to you! However, mm. when Daisha handed over the sword to the Sun God, he suddenly smirked mischievously and swung the sword mm. towards Daisha's third eye. Daisha froze and saw a three-eyed soul like herself escape from her body and collapse. The soul flew towards the mm. Sun God and was captured by him as his third eye in the surprise of Daisha. Finally, the day of revenge has come. Then, he broke his sword and transformed into a cruel demon king. It turned out that years ago, the younger brother of the demon king loved the queen so much that he agreed not to do anything wrong. Therefore, the demon king was very angry and wanted to destroy the couple, but his younger brother tried to use magic to seal him and passed away. Eighteen years later, the Demon King finally had enough power to escape the seal. But when he went to take revenge on the Queen, he found Daisha in the temple. The Demon Queen quickly recognized that Daisha's third eye was similar to that of his younger brother, and it was surely the daughter of that couple. 
Hmm. Hmm. If that kid is the hybrid child of the queen and my younger brother, then that magical eye will represent the soul of the demon existing inside its body. Then, if I can release the power and dark soul of that kid, my magic will increase exponentially. <laughs> However, despite using every method to obtain the eye, the Demon King still could not easily achieve this ambition. He needed something that could separate Dish's dark soul from her body, and that was the Divine Sword. <laughs> Therefore, the Demon King had to apply a part of his black magic to the third eye, and silently harmed the Queen to force Daisha to hand over the sword. As soon as he obtained the treasure, the Demon King finally gained the magical eye. It turns out that because I have half of my soul as a demon, that's why I feel tired and see my dark soul every time I come into contact with the light? That's right. Your mother probably didn't want you to feel ashamed of your identity and wanted you to focus on defeating the demons, so she kept this a secret. However, I will let your mother and you witness how the kingdom, which you have protected for so long, will be destroyed under my hand. <laughs> He then released many demons from the third eye to destroy and dominate the land. <laughs> Although Daisha was very shocked about her identity, she looked at her mother and people being attacked by the Demon King and his demons and knew that she had to fight to protect them. However, at this moment, Daisha didn't have her magic sword or her third eye, so the Demon King was able to defeat her easily. I can't give up like this! But I need a new plan to defeat him! She looked around and saw a crystal lamp swinging back and forth. <laughs> Suddenly, she came up with an idea. Hmm. Uh. Quickly, she picked up a broken piece of her sword and threw it towards uh. the lamp. Yeah. Although the Demon King was yes. able to dodge it, Daisha was able to steal the orb that held the Queen captive from his hand. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Mother, wake up! It's me, Daisha! Daisha. It seems like the Demon King has returned and attacked me again. I know everything, and now we need to find a way to defeat him. She ran to a locked room at the end of the hallway, but the Demon King caught up with her. <laughs> ha! You foolish child. Why would you willingly trap yourself here, making it easy for me to defeat you? If you're so good, then fight me! The Demon King attempted to cast a spell at Daisha, but he couldn't help but notice her confident expression. <laughs> ah, it seems like you want me to destroy the gate behind you. Is there something in there that scares me? Don't try to fool me. Suddenly, the orb containing the queen's soul flew out of Daisha's hand and taunted the Demon King. Mother! No! I won't spare you! Enraged, the Demon King fired a spell at the orb, but Daisha quickly shielded it with her body. Daisha, let it go! No, I won't! Mom, you have always been the one who worries and takes care of me for so long, so I cannot abandon the duty of being your child for these matters. Moreover, this is my fault for changing my mother's faith without permission. Therefore, I am willing to sacrifice myself for my mother. The Demon King was furious and used his last spell to create a huge explosion to destroy the mother and daughter. However, the door of the room was heavily impacted and collapsed revealing many shining treasures illuminating towards the third eye of Daisha, making the Demon King gradually fall due to fear of the bright light. Seizing that opportunity, Daisha quickly stood up and used the remaining power of the sword to defeat the Demon King. When Daisha regained her third eye, she quickly ran to the Queen to inquire about her mother's health. Daisha, I'm too tired. Perhaps I cannot pass through this life of door and death anymore. Therefore, my child, Please take good care of yourself later. It can't be. I can't let my mother leave me. Please, heavenly beings, save my mother's life. I will exchange it for any price. As soon as Daisha finished speaking, the sun god truly appeared in the hmm. dazzling light. Daisha, through the recent battle, I understand your filial pity for the queen, as well as the motherly <laughs> love of both of you who can live and hmm. die for each other. In addition, you have contributed a lot to this kingdom in the past time. Therefore, I agree to extend the Queen's lifespan with the condition that Daisha, you will deduct a part of your own lifespan to replace it. In addition, you must strive and continue the journey of demon slaying to protect everyone. I agree! 
After the sun god fulfilled his promise, the queen and Daisha were finally able to be together and live happily ever after. In a distant kingdom, both men and women had long and flowing hair. It's because the longer their hair, the stronger their magic. Allow me to introduce Tiffany, the lady with the longest, most beautiful hair. <laughs> Only those who have watched Roa Fairy Tales channel could be more beautiful than her. Who could be more beautiful than me? And so, um, Tiffany possessed the most magical hair in the kingdom. <laughs> Tiffany used her hair to perform showy tricks and attract attention. She and the people of the kingdom looked down upon those with short non-magical hair. In the past, Tiffany used her hair to help others as her mother had advised. Hmm. Don't hesitate to sacrifice your hair to save those you love. Mm. But after her mother's demise due to a scheme by a group of short-haired individuals, <laughs> Tiffany changed. She transformed into an obnoxious show-off. Surprisingly, people still adored her. Many suitors proposed to Tiffany. Yet, she only had eyes for Prince Ryder, soon becoming the princess with long hair. Tiffany's vanity grew even more pronounced. She assembled a team of maids solely to tend to her magical hair. The finest hair care elixirs were served for her alone. She compelled Ryder to organize weekly parties for her to flaunt her hair. Watch this! Behold the radiant glow of my hair! Nonetheless, Ryder continued to indulge his wife. But everything changed when Tiffany had an accident. This can't be, isn't it? When she awoke, the long-haired princess had lost something more precious than her life. <gasps> Are you awake now? What did huh? you do to my hair? Huh? Who are you? I am Tonsa. I found you lost in the forest, your highness. Your hair had already vanished by then. I had to bring you here. Where is here? The village of Short Hair. <gasps> what? I have to stay here? Mm. Hey. If you go back, they would cast you aside. And who's to say they would recognize you? <gasps> he... he isn't wrong. Mm. I've lost my hair. Reluctantly, Tiffany accepted the offer from that young man. <laughs> hmm. Oh? Hmm. To live here, she had to work. <laughs> Real work, not just using her magical mm -hmm. hair. <gasps> of course, she couldn't do anything well. Liking farming, she began serving the long-haired oh. folk. And she truly <gasps> didn't excel at huh? anything. <gasps> How can hair brushing even cause fires? Despite the hardships, <gasps> Tiffany didn't dare return. She was too ashamed, and no one recognized mm. her. <laughs> Fired again, huh? Come work with me instead. <gasps> Before she could start, though. Huh. Newcomer, huh? Your hair isn't even as long as a horse's tail. <laughs> Only then did she realize how insufferable she used to be. <laughs> Surprisingly, Tomsor stood up for her. He even accepted losing his job to save her. Hmm. 
Tiffany understood that she had misunderstood the short-haired people. <gasps> United by their lack of magic, they helped each other willingly. Tonsor and the short-haired people especially helped <gasps> Tiffany a lot. Mm. Oh. <gasps> oh, hey! Who asked for help? <laughs> Gradually, <gasps> a connection formed between the two. <laughs> hmm? <Huh? laughs> mm. One day, Tiffany had to visit the capital alone. No one recognized her as the princess with long hair. Hmm. And she saw her former husband, Ryder, but he seemed different. Why does that hair look strange yet familiar? Is that my hair? It's you! You stole my hair! Is it not the princess? Exactly! That's <laughs> her face! Obviously, Tiffany was captured immediately. I never thought you'd still be alive. It turned out Ryder had lived for a long time. He stole beautiful hair to maintain his youth. Because Tiffany was so famous, he had to trick her into marrying him to fulfill his sinister plan. I once had your mother's hair. Yours is even better. The short hairs harm my mother, didn't they? I hired those guys. This time's no different. <gasps> that tonsor should have ended your life. Only then would the hair be truly mine. Once <gasps> I am powerful enough, I shall seize control of the kingdom's hair magic. <gasps> Ryder staged a public trial of Tiffany to <sighs> deceive the masses. This short-haired woman has harmed my wife, impersonated her. Bring forth the accusations. <gasps> hmm. Immediate execution. No excuse. Stop! Tonsor suddenly appeared, exposing all of Ryder's wrongdoing. Hmm. That hair identical to the princess's former locks? I knew it instantly! A forgery! And then everyone's hair shall belong to me! And you too! Tonsor intervened, rushing to Tiffany's aid. But he had to trade his life for hers. Tonsor! Do you remember? We've known each other for a long time. It was you who saved me. I've loved you since then. I cut off your hair, deceived the prince, and hid you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No! No! <laughs> Miraculously, Tiffany's emotions triggered her hair's magic. <gasps> I know. I can't let you live. Ah! <laughs> Her hair punished Ryder and returned to her. However, the new magic wasn't powerful enough to save Tonsor. Don't hesitate to sacrifice your hair to save those you love. She decided to sacrifice all her hair to harness its full power. Tiffany? Though she lost her hair, <laughs> Tiffany saved the man she loved. <laughs> and she changed the mindset of the entire kingdom. These two short-haired individuals saved the whole kingdom. From then on, people with long hair and short hair began to live together harmoniously. As for Tiffany, she matured and became the rightful ruler. <laughs> And oddly enough, her hair started to grow again, allowing her to use it to aid the kingdom once more. Why are those little spirits touching the hand of that beautiful girl so brilliant? Does she have any magical powers? Let's find out with fairy tales now.
Once upon a time, in the village, there was a very beautiful lady named Lena. Although Lena is the only daughter of the village chief, she's not only unarrogant, but also extremely honest, always enthusiastic to help people around. Therefore, she is always loved by everyone. Lately, for no reason, her small village has suffered a long drought. The land is dry, so food is increasingly scarce. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Even though it was customary for her father to go to the temple to ask the goddess to bless the people, this time, there was no change uh. at all. Lena was restless mm -hmm. and decided to join her father <sighs> in praying again. <laughs> However, when the two just walked in front of the temple gate, suddenly, black clouds came, covering the sky. Not only that, when her father had just set foot in the palace, suddenly, a lightning struck the sky, carrying the bright light and turning her father into a stone statue. Oh no, Dad! Why did this happen? Lena had just finished speaking. Hestia, the goddess of the temple, appeared to her in a proud, serious manner. Huh? Don't cry and beg for anything else. It was your father who had committed great contempt for the gods. So you all have to suffer the whole things. Many days ago, when your father came to the temple, he knocked down the spiritual fire that cultivated long ago way too unreservedly. Not only that, he dared to put out my flame with his sword. This is unacceptable, and he has to pay for what he's done. Goddess! Please forgive my father and people. My father must have just inadvertently caused it without even knowing its importance. <laughs> so, please show mercy to my father and the villagers so that they can overcome this long tribulation. They've worked so hard in the sun, used up all their food reserves and had to travel to many places. Therefore, I also willingly give everything to save him and everyone. Seeing Lena's prayerful sincerity, Hestia's angry face gradually changed. All right, I'll make a deal with you as a way for you to make atonement for that clumsy father and save everyone. <laughs> you help me gather the spirits of water, fire, and light, the elements of the fairy forest, so that I may have more magic to cultivate my powers. When you finish the quest, I will spare your father as well as the others. Lena thanked Hestia and went home. She picked up her belongings and took her beloved father's sword and set out. Throughout the difficult road, Lena finally found the gate to the fairy forest. <gasps> However, the god guarding the gate was determined not to let her through. Please let me get into the forest. I need to find the elemental spirits to help the Hestia goddess restore magic as well as save the lives of my people and my father. Well, an ordinary person like you can't set foot in this land. Leave! Then the god <gasps> summoned the sword in his hand and threatened Lena. I'm sorry, sir, but my people and my father are in danger, so I have to be rude to you. <laughs> so Lena tried to pull out her father's sword and come up against the attack of the god. Only after seeing Lena's sword, the god was surprised and stopped fighting with him. How do you get the sword? This is the gift I gave to a brave man of great heart who helped the people of this forest. It was my father, but my father was turned into stone after committing unknowingly a sin against the goddess Hestia. I beg you to help me find the three spirits in the fairy forest. Turns out, you're his descendant. That explained why you are strong. You can use this divine sword. Hmm. Alright, I'll let you in. But you should remember that only worthy person of pure purpose and honest heart can gather three spirits and have the ultimate source of magic to cultivate. Thank you very much. I got it. Seeing Lena's eyes filled with hmm. optimistic and hope, the god immediately took her into the forest, where the three spirits were shining brightly. <gasps> Elemental spirits, I am here for no evil purpose, but to ask for your help to save the innocent people and my poor father. Therefore, may you understand my plea and join me in returning to the small village.
the elemental spirits looked towards the divine sword and gradually understood the deep <laughs> prayer, hurriedly shining brightly on her hand. Lena was very happy, thanked the guardian god, and quickly returned. Hmm. When she arrived at the temple, Lena immediately handed over three spirits to the goddess Hestia. <laughs> However, the goddess did not directly touch the power source, but used a divine bag to carry them. Lena felt a little strange when she saw the three spirits gradually change color, but she did not have time to ask anything. Suddenly, there was dark smoke around the temple, and the goddess of fire, mm. Hestia, was in front of her, immediately forming the Demon King. He threw yeah. Lena's father to prevent her from ruining the transformation of the spirits. <laughs> the elemental spirits are finally in my hands. Now, no one can accomplish my plan to take over this land. It turned out that before that, the Demon King had hypnotized Lena's father with his sword to extinguish the goddess's fire that weakened her, and then was kept captive. After that, the Demon King also caused people's lives miserable. Knowing that Lena was a talented person with an honest heart, he decided to disguise as the goddess Hestia and asked Selena yeah. for the three elemental spirits from the fairy forest. After possessing mm. three spirits in his hand, mm. he immediately disables the magic of them with the magic bag and transforms them into dark magic. Seeing the three spirits gradually controlled, <laughs> Lena took the opportunity and tried to retrieve the bag. Lena embraced the three spirits mm. in her arms, but by the moment, they were completely transformed and conquered by the Demon King. Not only that, the Demon King also quickly controlled the elemental spirits to return to him and began to use his power to destroy everything. <gasps> Seeing what was going on, Lena was terrified and in pain of not being able to save her father and the people. I did my best, but the strength of a man as ordinary as I could not fight against the Demon King. I'm so useless. No, Lena, you fought bravely. I'm sure you won't give up so easily. Dad, is that you? Only in response to Lena, there was only silence from the statue but she was still trying to motivate herself. You can't answer me right now, I know, but those words have given me the extra motivation to fight and the determination not to let it end like this. Then, Lena struggled drawing her sword and rushed to the demon. During the battle, she tried to resist and dodge the demon's moves and used her agility to cut towards the three spirits. The three spirits gradually restored their power, shifted from the dark color to their inherent quintessential beauty, and helped Lena beat the Demon King. No! The Demon King finally vanished, and the fire goddess Hestia was released from captivity. <laughs> then, the goddess of fire gathered up the three spirits and helped David, Lena's father, become a human again. Lena, on this journey, you've proved to us courageous, indomitable, and sacrificial spirit for others. Therefore, <laughs> I give you the water spirit and hope you can rule this land with me for the better. <laughs> My pleasure! Lena then happily joined her father in using the water spirit that had just been given to bring water to the people. <laughs> In the end, Lena and everyone lived together happily, warmly, and richly forever after. In the deepest part of the old forest, there was a village all the most powerful spells that fairy tales could have created. Making flowers bloom. Making flowers fade. <laughs> Making sun, rain, rainbows, and, well, pretty cool stuff like that. Ah, uh, well, I'm Ethan, a high-ranking fairy assigned to train four future preschoolers. Today was my first day on the job. Well, the four most exemplary students must have been eager to meet me. Can anyone explain to me what's going on? <laughs> no, 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 not anything. We didn't mean to do that. From that moment, it seemed that things were not as simple as I thought. And that it was. 
And that's the principle that elements create a balance of power. Do you understand? I was sure you did not. <clears throat> Teacher Ethan, I have a question. Well done, Faye. Say it boldly. About the lesson, I understand roughly, but despite Winter Howl, it's a flame of love. The flame in my heart is for you, teacher. You... what did you just say? Stop with your childish poem, Faye. Mr. Ethan doesn't like those empty, hot-headed people. Surely, you will like gentle people, right? <laughs> like? What to like? I'm your teacher. You are so unscrupulous. The girls in this forest all like you. Even that girl who pretends to do her own thing, but still listens with her ears up, it's no exception. It's not that. Come on, can we get back to the lesson? I would be so grateful if the three of you can be as serious as Gra. Are you writing the lesson, Gra? She wrote your name a hundred <laughs> times already. Now I understood why instead of being placed in the elite class, these four girls had to sit in this special class. <clears throat> Are you really not interested in learning? I see you all have qualities. It's no use, teacher. What's the point of studying when they see us as failures anyway? Before you came, we were already isolated. Don't give up. Today, we don't study books anymore. Everyone follow me. There was no normal way to teach these abnormal young fairies. It was time for me to use my magic. <laughs> wow! What can we do to help this bunny? Air goes first. You seem the most excited. Huh? Why me? Well, I don't know. I don't need to eat anything anyway. Probably rabbits too. Oh my, use your brain, Air. Creatures, of course, can't be like you. <gasps> Come on, Gra. Can you use your power to create grass for rabbit? <gasps> yes. <gasps> hmm? Loser. <clears throat> it's okay. So, Ward, a little water to quench your rabbit's thirst shouldn't be a problem, right? Teacher Ethan, I'm always ready. <gasps> I'm sorry, I messed up a bit. Stop pretending. <gasps> what are you saying? Huh? Faye, it's your turn. Can you give me a little fire? I'm going to freeze. A piece of cake. <gasps> <gasps> if you can't do anything, please don't destroy it! Well, it's alright. It's already late. See you here tomorrow. The next day, all four fairies were present. Waiting for a long time, but I still did not come. They all looked extremely impatient. Suddenly, they saw a huge <gasps> eagle in the sky. That eagle is so big! It's grabbing <gasps> something! Hmm. Oh my god! They are fairies! They're in that huge mesh bag! They've all been taken away! Let's follow it! One by one, they used their powers to bring down the eagle. But none of their efforts worked. And the eagle still swam over with ease. Don't, Don't do that, that Faye! The fire will spread and burn the forest! After trying to chase the eagle and got to the castle, the four discovered that the eagle was me, their teacher Ethan turned into. Air was the fastest fairy. She rushed forward without hesitation, but she was immediately caught. Teacher Ethan, this test is a bit overkill. Warning, all back. Teacher Ethan is hypnotized. The three fairies quickly understood the problem. 
They joined forces to rescue Air and free me from the hypnosis. I was so careless. Guys, hurry up. There are a lot of fairies being captured. Under my direction, all of them entered a large room where the other fairies were kept. Finally! I can't wait for the day to take over the entire fairy race! Don't rejoice so early! God will definitely send people to oppose you and save us! All those who oppose me are hypnotized! Tell me, who? Who will be here to save you? We, we are! are. <gasps> God, can you send someone else? <sighs> We're done! We're done! You're going to disappear and you still dare to look down on us? Watch this! Each person's subsequent efforts hmm. were quickly defeated <gasps> by the Dark Fairy. <laughs> That's enough playing! You little brats are starting to make me lose patience! At this point, when the four fairies did not know how to avoid it, I had no other choice but to fly out to block the attack like a savior. You are the best fairies I've ever taught, but that's not enough. Remember when you rescued me from hypnosis? Unity will bring you success! The four fairies looked at each other. They had figured out the only way to save the fairy race. Starting with the Earth Fairy, Gra raised a shield to block the spell, and she tried to prevent the opponent from escaping. Hey, look at me! It's our turn! Ha! We will let you know how the power of combination is! You know what to do, right? Ah, let me go! With a skillful combination of powers, he soon succeeded in defeating the Dark Fairy. Ahem, <laughs> you have all done a great job. However, I wonder if you heroic fairies have forgotten anything? Turns out, the tied fate of the fairies were untied by my students. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I'm so tired. It hmm? seems that the cage can't be opened. Hmm. Or should we send word to God to ask him to send other people to help everyone? <laughs> Come on, Air. We really don't know what to say. Whether it's thank you or sorry, it's really embarrassing. If it weren't for you, the fairies really wouldn't know what would happen. It's redundant, but we hope you can let it all go. We sincerely hope to be good friends with you again. So our class of four is probably not a special class anymore, right? <laughs> of course! See how happy you guys are? Teacher! <laughs> I know you can do it, you see? The strength of unity will help us overcome all difficulties. Teacher, I remember you told us earlier that we were the best fairies you ever taught. Is it true? Of course! So far, I've only taught you four fairies. <gasps> Why not the best? Fraud! We have successfully defeated the Dark Fairy. Surely a great teacher like Mr. Ethan will have a reward for us? Oh yes! The reward <gasps> is that tomorrow's class will be pushed one hour early. Come back! You still owe me homework on how to take care of rabbits. Impossible! We shouldn't have freed you from being hypnotized! Since then, I didn't know if my class has become less individualized, but I was sure it would be a lot more headache because the four of them now were able to unite to tease their teacher even more. Oh wait, is it truly happened while I was fainted?